Hey, this is Stephen Rupp, Senior Tech Editor with Hot Rod on the Motor Trend Network. We're here with Vic Cagnazzi, and uh, we have a pretty special car here we've been working on, Project X. When last we were here, they were uh, tearing it down, pulling out the old gasoline stuff, and we're all going electric. A lot of work, but we've been making a lot of progress, and even though it doesn't look like it, a lot of stuff has been going on, uh, starting with 3D scanning into CAD. These guys scanned the whole car, didn't you? Yeah, yeah so basically, I mean, with the Grom uh, Blue Light Scanner, what we did is we basically took an image of the entire car. So, I mean, not just the body, down to the chassis, the suspension, the nuts, the bolts, everything in the car. So when we begin to now take that data and consume it, it makes us makes the actual part of, of, of putting the car together and assembling the components together a lot different than you do in a traditional build. So Yeah, I because instead of doing a cardboard template and sending it out to a shop, yeah. you guys are able to 3D model the parts and then send them over to your own in-house um, CNC machines. Yeah rapid prototype the parts and put them on the car, kind of like those the motor mounts there. It was like a day and a half to come up with that from concept to the part on the car. And built. All right, we're here underneath X. Um, like we said before with Vic, this has all been scanned. Um, they're gonna be replacing the trans tunnel here, but this is where the transmission would have set yep. if it was had a transmission. Uh, we went direct drive, I know with the E-Crate, you can go either way with a transmission or direct drive. The whole kit is actually made to really replace the, the motor is to replace the engine. So from the drivetrain from the transmission back can stay in place. And this one we chose, as you said, to go with a direct drive with a quick change rear. And actually Parker, our lead mechanical designer here on this project, he can come in and kind of give you some details okay. on what that looks yeah, like. Let's talk to Parker. Sure. We have Parker Grove here from Kanazi Racing. Hello. Um, hey. Um, so, two-piece drive shaft. I know originally you are thinking about doing a one-piece, that's a really long drive yeah, shaft. Yeah, with the length of the drive shaft, we chose to uh, do a two-piece drive shaft just from a, a strength standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, what we're doing right here is actually mocking up the cross member that'll hold the center bearing. Um, we're getting it into place so we can uh, fabricate, design and fabricate a tube uh, cross member that we'll do in CAD and uh, send it out and have it bent and installed. And then you'll be able to also measure for the second drive shaft back Correct. to the quick change rear end. Yep, yep. So, the way it's going to work is the quick change will have obviously a quick change gear set in it that we can change the entire feeling of the car Absolutely. by changing those rear gears like you would do if you were shifting a transmission. Correct. Which we don't Correct. Have. It gives us a lot of uh, a lot of options there. What do we got going on here? Well, you know, this is actually an example of what we were talking about, right? Having all the designs done ahead of time. So, you know, with the scanning we talked about earlier, what enables us on this whole project was this entire back half here was completely designed in CAD. You know, Parker's... Uh, uh, expertise on that and if you think about what actually happened to you talk you're right we took the gas tank out but then we were left with this void right we had to put four batteries back here 700 pounds we had to build the structure and actually have it built in a way that's going to support it yeah so again this was very very heavy <laughs> and we actually had to make some modifications to the chassis back here so the chassis was a little narrower to accommodate the wide tires so when we come past the tires this whole piece was done it was modeled the, the uh, tubes were done and bent in a cnc bender some fabricating work done, all these trays were done, and, uh, and basically from this point, from the design point to this point is really just like an hour and a half or two hours. I also want to touch on some of the things that change that people really don't think about when you do this, right? At the end of the day, we no longer have a crankshaft sticking out of the front. We don't have pulleys, we don't have a harmonic balancer, we don't have a, a, a fan belt powered or belt powered air conditioner compressor or power booster for the brakes or power steering or anything like that. All that becomes electrified now, just like your modern car. We're here with Mitchell from Modern Racing. They came over to lend a hand with the wiring. So tell us how it's going. It's, it looks like a, it's like people that don't wire, this looks like a nightmare. It looks like a huge mess right now, but the way wiring normally goes is that it looks awful until <laughs> it right, right to the last 5% of it. Um, we've got the fuse boxes and the, the relays done right now. We're getting ready to go into one of the control modules, and then once that's done, we'll start tidying it all up. And while everybody here sees a mass of white wires, which I guess is because it's hard to find colored wires these days, um, all these wires have little numbers that you guys have little numbers you, you put on there. Yeah, so yeah, each wire has an, a circuit identifier on the end of it here. So you can and, figure stuff out. Yeah, so we can look at our blueprint and, fit, and know where it's supposed to go. And, and colorblind people can work on it just yeah, as easy. Yeah, It's perfect. Well, I'll let you get back to it because you got a lot of it to do. Yes, we do. Hey, we're here with Adam from GM. We're checking out the uh, motor here that's gonna be going into the car, mm -hmm. but you know, I don't think people understand quite the voltages that are involved. 
Um, this is one of the cables for the four batteries that are in the car. Correct. And it's what, 400 volts? Yeah, so it's a 400 volt system and this uh, cable itself is 70 millimeters squared. So it's a pretty big cable and it's also a shielded cable. So that helps with uh, electromagnetic interference escaping and also as a safety feature as well. Because safety is a big deal, obviously, when you have that much voltage moving through a steel car. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> people on it. Um, <laughs> And uh, this is why the batteries have to be cooled, so they have their own cooling system mm -hmm. and everything. So this isn't, you know, when you think, you know, oh, a battery, like the battery in my camera or my phone or my whatever, this is some pretty yeah. intense stuff. Yep, the, the, the basis of them are the same, but they're a lot more powerful, and uh, because of that, they need to be liquid cold and extra safety measures taken. All right, it's day whatever. I can't even keep track at this point. We've been working on the car for weeks. There's like nine days left till it gets stuffed on a truck and headed off to SEMA. They're furiously working on wiring. So lots of electricity means lots of wires. Lots of wires means lots of wiring. Better them than me because I would have this car burned to the ground if I was trying to wire it. That's where we're at and I have all the confidence in the world that these guys will pull it off and we'll have this car at SEMA fully functional. <laughs>